Good afternoon, everybody. Max, thank you so much for um, assisting us in the backgrounds always, you know, with the preparation for the events. Um, yes, so everybody, uh, good afternoon. Uh, if you are ready and willing, um, I'm going to quickly ask you to maybe for a brief moment to switch, just switch on your cameras, uh, wave, say hello, um, just so that we can get a feel of people being present with us in the room. It's not just a, a screen, and I'm sure most of you as lecturers had that feeling of talking into a void. So just seeing other people is always lovely. So hi, Gail. Hi, Richard. Nice to see you, Sheila. Um, while you're at it and, and smiling, and if you want to just quickly in the chat, maybe in one word, if, if you can, just tell me you can maybe say, let's focus on the weekend, the positive things. Maybe some of you had an extended long weekend. I did that. I took off. Friday, so how was your weekend? And maybe just hold off with your reply um, so that we do, do it as a waterfall. Uh, somebody asked the other day, why is it called a waterfall? It's simply because we hold back with our responses and when we say hit enter, then it's a waterfall of text just trickling in the chat. So if maybe you can um, just quickly do that. I'm going to give a brief moment for everybody. I'm tapping myself here. Yeah. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. There we go. Oh, Gail, work, work, work. No, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It seems like that's in general like the theme, right? <laughs> so, Richard, marmalade, do you share the recipe? Was it your first time, Richard? Or is it something you do regularly? No, it's something I do whenever my neighbor's tree there's lots of fruit that hangs over into my garden. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, that sounds divine. Aslam, that is wonderful. Uh, of course, she it was family Father's Day to, to all the fathers. Um, happy Father's Day. I hope there were some nice celebrations going on over this weekend. Um, yeah, so, oh, mine I see, I think, sorry. So I said mine was long and lovely and then a very long, lazy weekend, lazy but good, watch Friends again. Oh dear, I see Friends is, is, has made a comeback already. You can see it walking in the shops, all the teenagers wearing these French shirts, right? So, so we can have all the Ross and the memes and, and the, the jokes going around again. So thank you everybody for joining us. I'm sure that most people that wanted to attend would be here right now. This is part of the webinar series in Brightspace where we specifically focus on the pilot group of people as well as the early access people. And um, I would imagine most of you have a sandbox. If you don't have a Brightspace sandbox and you are present today, please just in the chat quickly let us know that we can send the link to you where you sign up for, for a sandbox um, so that you can get access to that and, and start playing around in Brightspace. But then without further ado, um, today we're talking about surveys and also the tool called Wookla. Um, I don't know if any of you maybe have used this in Vula before, so we really want to encourage the use of these tools in Brightspace going forward. And with me today, we have the lovely Mashudu, and Mashudu is going to assist and, and demo us, the, I want to say, the technical aspects of, of the session. And I'll just give you a brief introduction and talk you um, through some of the possible use cases, etc. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And then we can start with this webinar. Okay, Mashiru, can you guys wait? Shay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Great, thank you. So as I said, server and WooClap. So initially, we also included polls in the title because many people have used polls on Vula. Um, survey is the equivalent of polls in Brightspace, but if you would go and look for polls in Brightspace, you would not find it. Um, so survey is the equivalent to, as I said, and then WooClub has some extended functionality that we'll also address. And very welcome to this webinar. It's for me always a, a privilege to present and, and to spend the time with you. Some of the webinar outcomes that we're going to look at today, just briefly at the end, you should be able to create a survey in Brightspace, um, create a WooClap poll, 
on Brightspace and then identify objectives and use cases of polls and surveys, um, especially in the teaching and learning context that we find ourselves at at UCT. Just briefly, um, disclaimer, so the UCT Brightspace name uh, is changing, so the shortlist is for the VC. Uh, we are in, in anticipation of a, a new name um, so that we can start with the branding and work with that. Your sandbox site, please note this is a training site. It's your training site. It will not be your teaching site. Your teaching site, um, the pilot courses, in most instances, you would have um, received access to your, your new sites. But your sandbox, um, for now, you will continue having access to and you can play around. For the early access people, please do venture in there do searches and um, go through the training materials that's offered by SILT and, and go and see what and how you can build in Brightspace. Um, the other thing is, as we are still in the pilot phase, please expect changes. And um, so, for example, this will become a recording. And if maybe in two, three months time you view it again, uh, after the pilot, maybe we decided that there is um, very great feedback um, from either the students or the lecturers and some of the functionality needs to change and for example something might change here and there on on, on the site um, as we are still in the pilot phase and then d2l whenever or if ever we make references to it it's just the product owner of brightspace it's a company called desire to learn um, the flow of training, I like a very participatory type of um, interactive event. So whenever you have questions, please just feel free to type it either in the text chat. Um, Mashiru will alert me to any questions um, as I am presenting. And then alternatively, feel free to unmute yourself and, and just ask your question. And then those of you that do already have access to your sandboxes, um, please go ahead, open your sandbox so that you can see exactly as Mashiru talks us through it, um, where what your site looks like and if you can actually allocate the, the tools um, and the specific functionality that we will be addressing. Great, some quick notes. Will the recorded session the recorded session for all the webinars in this case will be uploaded onto the SILT channel. Um, so that means that you can just go to the SILT YouTube channel and um, you will have access to those recordings. All of the this webinar series recordings are uploaded onto the SILT website channel. Okay, great. So some quick notes. Um, a very interesting survey. So some of the teaching material, I want to say the generalized D2L Brightspace training materials. If you watch those videos, you would see that the survey tool would most probably be um, embedded within the NAV or somewhere. At UCT, we have decided to not do that since it's a tool that hasn't been popularly used before on Vula. So we will show you exactly how to navigate there, but if your sandbox is open, you can go to manage course and un under manage course, please click your first drop down, first item on the drop down menu that's course admin and there somewhere on the screen you will see surveys. Um, for some people, there will be a dividers of headings, um, but just look for surveys and, and there you will find both surveys as well as self assessments, which we're briefly going to touch on a little bit later. Okay, now in the chat, we are going to um, give you a WooClap link. Um, thank you, Mashiru. Oopsie. And if you will please just quickly navigate to that link, it should open in a new tab. And um, so for a brief moment, you won't see my screen, but you can just listen to my voice as you navigate there. And we just want to quickly ask you one question. What have you used polls or surveys for on Vula and what would you like to use it for on Brightspace? So if you click on the link that Mashiro provided, it should open that specific WooClap for you. Alternatively, if you just go to wooclap.com, um, it should also have a space where you can just enter the code. And the code I can also just quickly read out for you is X, H for human, Z for Zulu, U for uniform, X, and H again for human. That's the code. OK. 
I'm just going to give a few moments for people to navigate there and then to respond. If you really struggle with access to WooClub, um, please send Mashudu a message or alternatively, you are also welcome to just put your answers in the chat here. But ideally, we would want you to go to WooClub since we're going to be talking about this tool today. Okay, Mashudo, I just realized that the, the WooClap is yours. I don't know if you quickly want to share to, for us to view the results. All right, I'll share my screen. It says I can't share while you're still sharing. So I think Let you me need just to unshare. unshare. There. Oh dear, they say, they say Mashudo, I can't reach it either. There's a no vote in progress. So I see there are three people that have been able to, to join. So I think there, there must be a space somewhere that says uh, to enter code and just enter the capitals XHZUXH. I can see that there are some people who have managed to go in. Looks like we have three responses so far. Okay. Yeah. I think if other people, once you get there, um, very interesting, I see that the second and the third one is the same one. So you're supposed to choose class representatives, things that very great use of the tool um, because we get immediate feedback um, yeah and it's a anonymous process so you don't have to worry about raising hands and who's going to be angry at who for voting and not voting get class feedback on certain issues yes um, it would be interesting though uh, what issues specifically you uh, would have liked them to address finding consensus on issues yes um, so that you know what is what is the way forward um, in, in maybe one instance or on something is just what is it that we as a, a class decide on and um, participation on scenarios and discussions. Yes, it seems like this group has used polls and surveys uh, or polls at least on, on Vulan in a good way. Um, maybe in the chat you can indicate to us, did you use Vula Pulse or did you use WooClub or was there maybe another tool that you have used uh, when you have gone through any of these applications or maybe even a combination of, of any of the aforementioned? Yes, WooClub, Mentimeter. Yes. Um, and, and what's great about these tools, they are free, um, they are easy to use, form. Uh, yes. Okay, polls only for class rep elections. Great. Okay, so without further ado, let's quickly look at the survey tool in Brightspace. Um, one of the first things that we need to say to each other that we are moving into the blended environment. So we, with emergency remote teaching, we were in the fully online environment, I want to say, and now we are moving into the blended environment and, and we are integrating more face-to-face -face time with students. And what's great about the survey tool and all surveys is that you can use it in both instances. It's always just a case of deciding what is it that you want to, to, um, to address it for. What is your objective with all of this? Let me just briefly share my screen again. So if we, so, so as I said, either asynchronous or synchronous. And the great thing about these tools is that we can set it up in a way that it gives us real time results. And um, so that class rep, for example, if it's a poll, you can even see as they are voting, the votes going up, going down. And um, it makes me think of back in the day when we watched Oprah on TV and she would be like, you know, ask for feedback. And there was still um, one of those devices that they, I think they were under the chair or something and the people could vote 
Um, so this is literally a case where we can ask students to do this. Um, if they have their laptops with them in class, but very comfortably also, also just using their smartphones. Um, so the other thing that we also um, need to address up front is just to say that polls can either be open for a longer period of time. Um, so that's usually in session, or you could also just say it's a short period of time and we close it. So um, the short ones more for, for the synchronous session and then asynchronous would be ongoing, um, especially where because we're not sure when people are logging in and out of, of the LMS, for example, of Brightspace in, in this case. Um, very good about the survey tool on Brightspace is that you can schedule it so so that it opens at a certain date so you can determine the open date you can determine the the close date you can set those um or what you can do is if you want to release it and you don't want to set the date you just save it for later it will save as a draft you can just go back um you know whenever you are ready continue with the editing and or then release the the um, survey to the students there are about 10 multiple question type options um, within the survey tool uh, on Brightspace. I'm going to uh, share a screenshot with you just now in terms of what they are. And then it can be either anonymous or show names. And this all depends on what is it that you want the feedback to be, uh, what is the type of question, and again, coming back to what is the objective. So very important to note upfront is that the survey tool is not linked to the gradebook. This is not a mistake. It was accident. It was um, intentionally done like this, um, because we we don't want the polls. Um, it, it's just nonsensical to think that if I vote, vote for somebody that it would be linked to the gradebook, for example. And there are other ways that we and, and other tools that we can use. And I'm going to briefly talk about those as well. OK, some use cases for surveys. Um, thank you for sharing on, on WooClap um, some of the use, use cases. Um, so first, first thing that comes to mind, student engagement opportunities. At the beginning of your class, you can have an icebreaker. Um, and this can be, again, synchronous or asynchronous. Um, so you can ask questions and let people respond. So I want to say for surveys, one of the main things and one of the main objectives is to collect information and, and to seek opinions. Um, so it's where areas are very subjective. It's a safe space for students. And then again, depending on the question, you can decide whether it should be anonymous or not. Um, so there's icebreakers, access previous knowledge, seek opinions. Um, you could ask for re reflections on videos or readings. This is a very useful way if you want to apply the flipped classroom method, for example, and you want students to either do a reading or watch a video before they come to class, and then you could have that survey um, on the LMS, maybe embedded uh, after directly after the reading or the video, or alternatively, um, as they enter the classroom, you can quickly ask them to take out their smartphones and then they can um, answer the questions that you post to them. Um, solicit feedback in aspects of the course, very important. This is a tool that's good for us um, to determine and have that pulse check on the students. How are they doing? How are they finding? Is the, is the pace okay? Um, what is it that they struggle with? What are the areas that they need to help with? And um, those are the type of questions that you could ask. And um, you can embed many of these things on the LMS. So that's scheduled, you know, I want to say for every module, for example, or you can determine, I want to say certain access points on, on your course outline. I would strongly suggest that you decide on these before you even start with your semester, maybe even every second week or every third week. Um, or if your course is chunked, um, I want to say logically, where certain modules are chunked together, then once that chunk of content is done, then you can maybe assess them um, on that. Uh, a word of or, or something to note at this stage is if we want to focus on content, surveys are not necessarily the best tools to use. Um, we should rather use the self-assessment tool. And the self-assessment tool is going to be dealt with in more detail during the um, 
during the assessment webinars that would be a, a series that that starts tomorrow but i just want to note here that um if you were thinking of maybe um testing some content or the content knowledge so anything content related and if you want to have formative type of feedback sessions or provide feedback to students rather think of using the self-assessment tool um, i'm briefly there's another slide that i'm also going to give you more information on that okay so something some other use cases for surveys just learn about students and their preferred delivery or assessment preferences and then the survey tool evaluate the survey tool only so i specifically state here the survey tool only because for mid and final course evaluations um whether it being official or non-official but i would imagine that mid mid course evaluations more for your own benefit for the students to get that um early type of feedback from students in order for you to still make adjustments to your course if needs be um, and you can have these micro evaluations what we sometimes refer to at a regular pace as i said maybe every second week where you chunk them for this type of exercise, I would strongly recommend that you use the survey tool that's embedded on the LMS and because that way it's all grouped together, you can schedule it, there's a logic place and um, where it goes only but um, or a logic place where it's embedded in the course that students have access to. Um, I would say try not to use tools like WooClap and, and you can, it's not wrong, but if you have the survey tool and it's embedded there, then it go, it's it's not going outside of the course and it lives there. Um, so again, what is your objective? Three tools that seem on a surface level that they do similar things. And I just need to state up front that many of the questions that you're going to load into your quiz, your surveys, or your self assessment will go to your question library. Now, in preparation for this webinar, I tested it out. But if you, for example, have a question that you pull from a quiz into your survey, just remember on the quiz, it, it's linked to the gradebook. It's set for a certain mark. Um, so you might find that it's difficult because essentially they do different things. So what is it that they need to do? A quiz, a quiz is usually the place where we focus on assessment, and it is usually also used for summative assessment um, on many instances, um, well, what we've seen on Vula before. So it provides students with a score. That score, you can decide whether it's going to affect the final grade and or not. So it doesn't have to count towards the final night, but it's a good place where it gives students feedback in terms of um, where they're at, um, how comfortable are they in answering the questions, do they understand um, the, the content, and then commonly used for summative surveys, as we said. So surveys are not graded, it's not scored, so by default it's definitely not linked to the grade book, um, but it does give the, the instructor some results. The results can be viewed um, and downloaded as needed, so you can share it um again this uh, i want to just caution be sure that if it's anonymous it's it should be anonymous and and if somebody maybe um you know if it was not anonymous and people shared their names i would be cautious as to where i would share the results or, or maybe you know just think carefully as to maybe not showing who answered but in general um just what the outcome was of of the the survey and then lastly, there's also a tool if you go to course admin under managed files, course admin, that's linked self-assessment. Um, the name literally says it all. This is the tool I was referring to a bit earlier, where we focus here on the content delivery. Um, so this is solely for the purpose of students to assess their understanding of the content. Um, so what Brightspace allows you with self-assessments is with self-assessments, you can see whether a student have done the self-assessment or not. Um, so I want to see, you can see, um, it's, it's going to be either a yes or a no, uh, but you cannot see what happened within that self-assessment. And it's usually within the self-assessment where you can provide formative feedback to students. If you want to prepare them, maybe it's, um, you know, um, in preparation for an upcoming quiz or something like that, that they go, can go through this. This is partly also to make sure that students know exactly um, 
that they understand the content, first of all, but also that they can build confidence in terms of knowing how the answers are going to be formulated and that it's not a language barrier necessary that they also have to overcome. Okay, so some of the question types to the left of our screen here. This is a screenshot of all the question type options that you have available in the native survey tool on Brightspace. Um, so it does give you an option to create sections. The sections also you can decide whether it will be viewable um, by students or not. So you can either hide the sections or not. This is very useful if you want to, to have um, certain chunks, groups of information and maybe randomize some of the answers. That's a very useful way to do that. So true and false questions, multiple choice, multi-select questions, written response, short answer questions, multi-short answer questions, and fill in the blanks, matching questions, ordering questions, and then liquid questions. If you look at my screen, you will see to the right, there are three rows of information. And these icons are all the question types that is available on WooClub. So I think it's just on face value already, you can see um, that, that WooClub offers you more options. Um, so it is a more sophisticated tool. And if you maybe don't see what you need in Brightspace, feel free to use WooClub. Something else to consider as you go into your blended context is that the survey tool will also live on your LMS. And students will have the opportunity to download the Pulse app. And we strongly encourage and encourage you to ask your students to download the, the Pulse app on their phone. And then once they have that, they will have to go into the specific module in your course, you know, unless you can share that link maybe beforehand in an email with them, maybe in an announcement also, you can you can do it that way. But with WooClub, if you provide them with that code, even if they're not on the LMS, there's just a quicker way of, of setting up a survey in terms of the time that it takes to navigate there. WooClub also has the functionality where if you want to, you can, when you put the code and let's say you're in a lecture hall, and you have the screen up, you can put the code there for the students and then next to it, you can also have a QR code. So students can literally take out their phones and they can just aim at the QR code, scan it, and it will directly take them to um, to, to that particular survey or whatever it is that you want them to do. Okay, so, um, oh, another thing about WooClap is that WooClap has the functionality that you can embed it in a PowerPoint. So if you're maybe thinking of, you know, literally as you go through your PowerPoints in your lecture, you can have the WooClap there directly on the slide. Um, so it integrates, if you open WooClap, it says great presentation. So it integrates, um, I want to say seamlessly with PowerPoint. So that's just another um, plus that, that WooClap has. Um, something very, very good for maybe it depends on your type of discipline, but where I've seen very good uses of, uh, of WooClap is, for example, find on the image and you can have, let's say you are teaching neuroscience and you have an image on the brain and there are several areas highlighted and, and literally when the students open the image on their phone, those areas would be highlighted and they can find it on the image to say this is the amygdala or this is the hypothalamus or whatever the case may be. Um, so it, it could be also quite fun for students to engage with that. Okay, so WooClub. Again, WooClub is very easy if you navigate there. Um, please create or, well, most of us, we use our UCT accounts to create WooClub accounts, but you don't have to. Um, it's very easy to register an account on WooClub and then there are very short tutorial videos if you are interested in a little bit more advanced type of integration into the system. So once you open, it's going to ask you, create a multiple choice question. You're going to type in the question. Here's some of the answers that has already been created and students need to select that. Um, and then when you're going to open WooClub, just you say results visible by default. That's if you want students to also see the results. Um, and then there's also this button that's very interesting. It says, I'm confused. Uh, it's just, uh, I want to say lighthearted way um, that 
WooClap is built in. So in your classes, when you're literally teaching content, and I think especially you as a lecturer know where are the sticky points, where are the points where students struggle, and um, the difficult things. And you can, as you ask them some of these questions, and they can literally select the I'm confused button. And then instead of you looking at all the question marks on their faces, it's like digital question marks coming through um, on, on the questions with the questions. Okay. Um, so it's very easy to set up different question types available, easy to interact with as a student itself. And then answers can be downloaded and saved in either Excel format, or you could even use it as a PDF. And then you decide, do you want to embed it on the um, platform? We can also just share with you that WooClap integrates and embeds within Brightspace, which means that if you created in Brightspace, space the link you can you have the let's rather say you have the option to embed it you can also select the option to say that it will link out into um you know a, a different tab or it literally stays and when it embeds it's a seamless experience for the students as they click through and this would probably more be in the asynchronous format they would click through the the unit through the content when they get to WooClap, it will be there on the page they fill it in and then they click the next hour of brightspace and it takes them to the next brightspace page um so that's always also a very nice nifty feature of WooClap to to be embedded on brightspace itself Okay, here's the button where I said they can just toggle it to say, um, this is probably not the correct question, um, but uh, it's just to, to demonstrate to you. So describe your past weekend in one word. Um, if it was a difficult question or maybe two concepts that are, that are too close to one another whatsoever. And then when they get the feedback, maybe now they thought they knew the answer, now they don't. And they can just simple, simply toggle it to confuse and you understand, oh no, I need to go back and I can re-explain um, this particular section of the work to my students. Okay, now it's time for me to hand over to the lovely Mashudu. Thank you, Nadine. Um, right, I'm just going to share my screen. Nadine, can you see my screen? You should be. I can. It says use cases for surveys. Oh, it's supposed to be the design studio page. I think I shared the wrong screen. Is it yes. on the design studio page? Okay, yes. awesome. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to be doing the demo um, to show you how to create a survey on Brightspace. And then we will then uh, continue to do, um, we'll do the WooClap demo as well. So I'm going to start off with how to create surveys on, on Brightspace. Now Nadine has already sort of um, touched on this that you'll go to your course site and then on the nav bar, uh, you'll go to manage course and then course admin. And then under course admin, you'll see that there are a number of tools over there and you will also find the surveys tool. So you will then click on, on the surveys tool. So there are two ways in which you can create a survey. So it's through this method that I'm showing right now, where you go to your course, uh, manage course, course admin, where you will then create a new survey um, over here that you can then embed into or add as a link into your lesson page. And another method is adding it from or creating it from your content page where you will create its its own page where students can easily just navigate um, uh, you know through the pages like 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 on brightspace so those are the two ways that you can that you can use so it's access through uh, you create a, a checklist through the manage course course admin tool create a survey then add it as a link into a lesson page or a, a content page it could be an html page or you can create it directly 
um, from content as a web as a web link. So using this method, as you can see, um, after landing on this page, um, there are a number of buttons or tools that you will see there. There is a button that allows you to uh, create a new survey. If you have created surveys before, you'll see that there'll be a list of all the other surveys that you have created. And they'll be listed over there. There is a, um, if you have created categories, there's an edit categories button over there. We, in which by clicking on that, you can also, if you want to create a new category, you can click on that button, edit categories to add and create a new category. So categories are useful, um, especially if you want to, you know, if you want to tag or group your your surveys. These can be these 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 can come in very handy, or the questions in your in your surveys as well. You can also edit the existing categories um, over there, and I'm going to click on save and close to go back to the main um, survey page. Um, another thing, you have the more actions button. And in here, if you have created a survey that you would like to duplicate or copy, you can just click on that specific survey, click on the drop down arrow by more actions, and then copy to make a copy of that survey. You can also reorder or reorder your surveys um, just for organizational purposes. And you can choose to hide that specific survey that you've selected or a number of surveys that you've selected or make visible, or you can also delete them. So you can delete um, in bulk if you wish. So if I select all of these, click on more actions and delete, I can also delete those or hide or hide them. There's also an option to bulk edit. Yes, Nadine. Um, Sorry, Marshuri, there's, there's a question. Just to say, I'm not sure I understand what is a category versus a new survey. Is a category allowing me to group um, a number of surveys together? Um, so, okay, category, what I saw, okay, what I understand is that when you click create a new survey, um, let's say you've already created your categories under categories, or you can also create categories here. Um, I think that it's, 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 it's a way of categorizing like what, I mean, like a tag as to this survey falls under this category. Um, I can just, I'm just thinking that it could be applicable, let's say if for the various modules that you might have, to say that, okay, this is under this module one, the survey specifically falls under module one, because from here, you can always draw or pick or specifically add the category if you have created them already, you can say that this new survey that I'm creating will fall under module one or will fall under module two. Um, I think it's a some sort of way of tagging or recognizing that this survey specifically falls under this this category and and I think it all depends on on you as an individual how you want to structure it and, and what you use um, I want to say the surveys for in your course if you have those micro evaluations for example that we've spoken of maybe you can have a micro evaluation one for example and if you have student opinions and then you can have another category maybe on that. So, but she says it seems like it's manner of grouping things together. Thanks, Mashidu. Yeah, and it looks like you can also use a filter there to say um, you want to view your your the service that you've created according to by category. So, if you have had created categories, then you'd be able to see those specific um, those specific um, surveys according to the categories that you that you have created. So I'm now going to demonstrate how to create a new survey. So in order to do that, uh, just before I start with that, there's also this bulk edit button over there, which allows you to, if you've selected a number of surveys, to sort of do like general um, 
you know, minor edits or almost like in a list form. So it will give you this entire list of surveys that you have, and then you can make minor changes like the category or naming there for yourself or just tick that this should be hidden from users. But it's not necessarily big um, changes that you would be making in your, in your individual surveys. So in order to create a survey, you need to click on new survey and then give your survey a name. I'm going to give this one test three. And then if you have a category, you can just, if you have created a category, you can just add the category name there or you can also create a category right there as you are creating your survey. You can select as to whether you want um, your students to receive instant feedback as they navigate each question during the survey. You can also say this should be an anonymous, uh, make results anonymous. This would be anonymous to you and to, to your students as well. or you can opt to not have that anonymous, then you'll be able to see the people that have participated in that, in that specific survey. Now, in order to add questions, there is a add or edit question button over there. This is where you would add your questions. Before I do that, um, there is a, an option there to add a little description of the overall survey as well as add a final submission message that the students will receive at the end of the of the uh, at the end of their survey or after completing or submitting the survey and then the page footer that will appear on each on each page so i'm going to now add questions hi sorry could i ask a question yes Yes, you can. Sorry. Um, for the anonymous feature, if the survey isn't anonymous, only we can see the students that completed it, right? Like students can't see. Who... Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Students can't see the responses. It's only the instructor that can that can see the responses and generate a report from that. Students oh. won't be able to see the outcome of the of the results no uh, thank you no. all right so i'm now going to add the questions in i'm going to click on the new button now you can see there when i click on that button the various question types appear so brightspace has about up to 10 different uh, questioning questioning types or question types so i'm going to I'll create a true or false question. There is an option to also import. So you can import a file uh, or upload a file from your device, but it only supports the CSV files. So it's not a case where you will find that it will support a Word doc or a PowerPoint or PDF document. It, will, it only supports a CSV file that you can upload from your computer. You can also browse from the question library. This will take you to um, you know, some of the existing questions that you might already have in your, in your, or that you've already created in that specific site. That is what would appear under your question library. So I'm going to click on create new question. Um, I mean, new, yeah, I'm going to, to add the question. So I'm going to cre create a new true or false question. Now, because there is no right or wrong thing on, on surveys, you'll find that there isn't an option to say, select this as a correct answer. Because it is a survey, there is no right or wrong answer. It's not uh, necessarily a graded thing. So I'm going to, um, I'll type in the question here. Okay. 
Okay, and that's my question. As I said, there's no option to say which question is true or false because it's a survey. Now, as you create your survey, you add your question, you will see that there'll be a little preview that will appear, a preview window that will appear on the right side of the screen. This sort of shows you what the student's view will, will be like um, of the survey after it is completed. So under the option, there's like an option button over there that gives you an option to add feedback to that specific question to students, to add a short description as well, or you can add an enumeration, which would be, for example, um, you can say A or B or one, two. Um, so it basically sort of gives a, like a, almost like a numbering system to your questions. That's what that tool would be for. And then when you are done adding your question, you can add safe if, if that is like the last question that you're adding, or you can add, you can click on the drop down arrow to say save and add new if you would like to add a new question. So in my case, you can also say save and copy if you want to save and duplicate or create what you would like to create another true or false question, you can click on save and copy and then make edits to that new question. So I'm going to say save and new. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to now change my question type. I'm going to add a different question. And this time around, I want to make it a, I'll pick a written response. So you can, as you move along, as you create your questions, you can simply change the question type by clicking on the drop down arrow there next to, in my case, I had the true or false question because that was the last type of question that I used. So by clicking on that drop down arrow next to the, next to the question type, you can select a new or a different question. So in this case, um, there is there, there are different features that will appear as you depending on the depending on the question type that you'll pick. So in this case, I've now picked a written response. You can see that there are there's a different there are different features or different functions that have now appeared. There's a one that is enabling that would enable students to edit in an HTML um, sort of text box document, which would look like that. So it gives them some of the familiar formatting features that you'd find in an HTML tool. Or you can also say allow learners to be able to add or insert images and add attachments. And as you can see, just by clicking on that box, already there are some buttons that will appear. This is what it will look like when the learners interact with, with that tool. So they can add file, they can even record an audio or even record, uh, record a video. So that is what it would look like. So I'm going to click on save. I'm done creating my survey. I'm then going to click on, oh, I didn't add a question. Um, uh, I'm going to ask, what do you think about Nadine's reading? Okay, and then I'm going to click on save as something that would need a written response or some feedback about Nadine's reading. And so you can see after I've clicked on save, I have the title or the name of the survey over there. I have my all the survey questions over there appearing there below. And this is, I've basically, you know, I'm done with this survey. If I would like to delete specific questions, I can by clicking on that question, click, I mean, tick on it and then click on delete. I can also reorder um, if I would like to reorder all these uh, and reshuffle these questions around. There is an option to also edit values, which would 
Okay. I can't quite remember what this button was for. Um, but the delete and reorder buttons would be over there. The move button, um, it's, it's quite a bit complex that it moves. I'm not too sure where this collection box is. Um, so we're still investigating what the move button would, would be useful for within, within the surveys tool. So I'm done creating my survey. And I'm going to then click on the done editing questions button. And it will take me back to the main surveys page. I am done making all the changes, but if uh, this, this gives you an opportunity to just go back and um, make some additions over there. So this time around, you can see that there is a an option to say how many pages should be displayed, how many questions should be displayed on a page. Um, it also gives you an option to say to prevent students from move, moving backwards through the pages if you would like. It gives you an option to also shuffle questions at the survey. Um, it is important to just look at this page again because some of these tools only appear after you've created your survey. So at the beginning of the survey, when we were creating the survey, these were not, these tools, for example, were not on the, on the, on the survey page. So after you have uh, put your settings up, you can then save and close. There is an option to invite participants. In this case, you would, it would send an email to the participants that you 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 like the participants that you would like to interact with the survey. So by, by clicking on this, it you will then it'll take you to an email messaging box that will allow you to enter an email or email addresses and then send the survey to to your participants. I'm not going to demo that. I'll just go ahead and save and close. So we have created our survey, and you can see that this is under the category category. So that is how it would look like and how the categories would work on grouping your, your surveys. So right now we've created our survey and we want to add that survey in the content, in a content page. So I'm going to do this in one of our sites, the Design Studio demo course. And I'm going to find an HTML page over there, um, let me just create a new HTML page. Okay, so what you would do is in your page, say you have added um, content or even instructional text, in order to add a survey that you have created as a link, you would click on the link button over there, which is on the formatting on, on the toolbar, on the HTML toolbar. Then you would go and find the surveys button. It will show you the list of surveys that you have created. So I want to insert this survey into this page. And what it will do is it will add that survey as a link that students can then click on. So you can even just make a little note to say, here is the link to survey to make sure that students don't, don't miss that. So that is one way that you can do that. You can also create a new link. Um, you can also create a new link over there. Just, I mean, create a new survey over there by clicking on surveys on the link button, then surveys, then create new survey. That is how it would work if you're adding it as a link onto your lesson page. Then there's another way that 
this in this method using this method it will allow you to add or just simply create a new survey it will not allow you to add an existing one unfortunately which is the method where you click on create new then go to more then surveys this option here allows you to or create a new survey it doesn't allow you to go back to the old surveys um, to add in any existing any, any any existing surveys so that is how that would work and what it will do is that it will create uh, a, a, a tool like this will this is how it will it will look like so it will have its own sort of page that as students navigate between pages um, they will then land to that then they can open the survey and complete the survey this is what it will look like so I can see we're running out of time and I'm just going to quickly do the demo for the work lab and So Work Lab is a UCT supported tool that you can access by simply logging into Office 365 and then log entering your UCT, the UCT details. Um, it will then you will then get, get access to, to Work Lab or you can sign up, sign up using um, Microsoft, then you'll be able to go into Work Lab. Nadine has already shown that Work Lab has a number of um, of questioning of question types, which um, there's a lot here that is very suitable for, you know, a 21st century learning um, in the classroom. Some of the skills that allows you to, you know, that encourage collaboration, that encourage interaction, which is good for both asynchronous and synchronous um, interactions. So I'm going to create um i think we're left with just three minutes but you can create a poll on i was going to demonstrate how to create a poll on WooClap, but in the interest of time i'm just going to use this specific um WooClap, uh WooClap question that i already had created i had created an open question and what this um, looks like, uh, this is how it looks like. So at the moment, um, after you create your work lab question, what you would then do is you can click on start. If your students will be um, interacting with it directly on work lab. But if you want to embed your work lab question on Brightspace, what you can do is that after creating your work lab question, you can click on those three drop down, I mean, the three little dots over there, and then click on copy direct link. And then what this with that link, you can then go to your Brightspace page, then create new add web link. And then here you can just give your page a title. I will say WooClap survey and then add a link over there. You can also add a due date if you wish for that. You can choose as to whether you want to embed it on the page or for it to open in a new window or a new tab. Now it's always best to embed it on the page because then students can just interact with it directly um, on that specific page without having to leave uh, uh, you know to go to a different window so i'm now going to click on save and close and what it will show is it will show a page on WooClap. i mean a page on the brightspace um, course site with the WooClap frame on it. So in this case, students will not even need to log into any of these platforms to access the to access the page. They would simply need to enter the code that you would have provided for them to add um, to to then interact with that WooClap. 
So this is the best method, adding a link as a web link into WooClap. It provides a, a nice big window that students can, can interact with, uh, with the survey in. Um, alternatively, you can also use the I copy, the iframe code embed, but at the moment, it's not a very seamless, um, it's not a very seamless process because it creates this little tiny window, as you can see on the screen, which might make it difficult for students to, to interact with. But the benefit of this would be if you are adding this as an iframe, that you can add instructional text over there. But because it shows this tiny little screen, I don't think this might be a good idea. So the best thing would be to add it as a, a web content link. So um, unfortunately, we have run out of time, but I'm hoping that what we've managed to cover, you've uh, grasped some idea on how to create a survey on Brightspace and also how to um, you know how to most importantly I wanted us to to know how to embed a question from WooClap into into the bright space. I think you can then go and fiddle and play around with the uh, different questioning uh, the different question types on, on WooClap but um, and then also try adding those on on bright space. I'm now going to hand over to, to Nadine. Nadine, I think. Yes, this thank you so much. Julia. There was another question just in the chat um, about the embedding of the frame, just to say it's not user friendly. Why can't we link the students to the survey directly? But um, when we tested this morning, I was linked. Um, I was I was um, signed into WooClub and then it opened up directly where it should have gone. So if the student is, if they log into WooClub and they remember their password or save their password somewhere, they, it, it should take them directly to, to the survey girl. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, if there are any other questions, I don't know, we are at time. Um, so we can stop the recording. Thank you, Max. And thank you everybody for coming. Um, you know, if, if there's another question or two, we can just quickly stay behind and, and answer that. But um, thank you for your time and thank you for joining. I hope um, that you are gearing up for the assessment sessions that are starting tomorrow. And um, as I said earlier on, all these webinars are recorded and will be uploaded to the, to the SILT YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Have a, have a great afternoon.